you have to be your business just as much as your business has to be you. You can have so many people that will tell you, don't do it, do this, do that. Failure is not a bad thing. Three characteristics that make up an entrepreneur. Passion, determination, yeah. perseverance. It's not about how hard you get hit. It's how many times you get hit and how many times you keep getting keep, up, uh, keep going forward. Would I ever want to go back into an office that's technically a nine to five? I will work every single day of my life. I'll work even harder so I don't ever have to go back to that. Oh, there They're actually very comfortable. Canadian made, yeah. the new company is Global Sports Insurance. It's a money maker. You want to get people, number one, invested in you. I think a lot of people don't go, wow, like, that was a big milestone and congrats. So big things for this lady. She's a woman entrepreneur. So if you're a young girl, believe in yourself and yeah. don't listen to the negative people. The message is life is short, but we do have a blessed time that we're here. And if we understand who we are, why we're here and what our what is, we're going to be better not only to others, but that we're going to be the best person we can be. Refuel by DigiPow, portable power on the go. Money. You want to make it, save it, and preserve more of it. Canadian made, sock jock. We're not about the socks, we're about the why. Hey guys, what's up? It's Marcin from the Uber Experiment. I mentioned that I may have some, uh, some Olympian on the show. Well, we're picking up right now. Oh my goodness, traffic is incredible here. Good morning, how's it going? Good, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, do you see me? I'm right before Sullivan on Spadina. Yeah, I want to see you then. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to come down there? Yeah, just come in my car. There's nobody behind me right now. So. You'll see a tall girl walking right towards you. <laughs> All right, sounds good. I'll see you yeah. shortly. Good right. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey guys, so Marcin here Hi. with Miss Angela Gorin. Hello. She is the former Olympic athlete for the rowing team. More like a national level athlete, I would say. Oh, come on, <laughs> always all these entrepreneurs are modest. <laughs> I'm gonna let her introduce herself to you while we start uh, driving. So let's, let's do it. So tell us uh, about yourself. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Well, you're right. Athlete and entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I've been able to mix both passions. Never thought I would definitely be where I am today. I think most people in small business are, would say the same thing. I don't think that's where we start, right? You no. start with something and then you go, wow. And somehow you stumble upon it and you really can't answer when or why. You have sometimes an idea. Um, grew up in a family that was active outdoors, west coast of Canada represent mm -hmm. and uh, definitely Where about you, uh, Vancouver Island okay. but it's kind of funny I'm a real all source Canadian like my background like you you know Polish no, I'm, Ukrainian I'm Polish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then I got a mix I found out like Czech a little bit but um, I was born in Winnipeg or in Winter Peg as other people Winter call Peg. it. Winter Peg. And uh, family moved towards the west west coast. Uh, I would have been about seven or eight, I think. But I remember arriving on Vancouver Island right after Expo 86. Because I remember as a kid, like, that was a big deal. I don't know what that is. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't hearing Oh, well, Expo 86 is like expos happen all over the world. It's like a big pavilion. It's like a world fair. Yeah, thing? exactly. Okay. And it travels. So um, Canada hosted in Vancouver. Expo 86. Okay. I don't think it's been back to Canada actually since 86. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So we moved out to Vancouver Island and I would have been about eight years old. And obviously as a child, when you have ample forest trails, um, exposure, beach, uh, you want to play outside. Yeah. So you look, you totally look like an outdoorsy. Uh, I'm, I'm, girl. I'm an outdoorsy girl. I, I kind of, this is, this is a different apparel. Obviously I like to get dressed up and do that kind of stuff. It's just a womanpreneur, right? Womanpreneur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So yeah, you, I, I, most of the time, if you meet me, I'm definitely wearing runners and a workout kit. Mm -hmm. Or like, you look at my car right now, the back is full of, you know, different workout gear and skipping ropes and therabands. And I think ever since being a child, that's been ingrained in me. And been fortunate enough that sports kept me and made me definitely a person that I am. Uh, is this something that your parents instilled in you, or do you think it just you gravitated towards uh, athleticism and sports when you were young? I definitely gravitated towards it, but I think parents and your home environment play a huge role. If you have a support network or you have people that encourage you, coaches are really important. Grade seven was a pivotal year for me. I had an amazing middle school teacher that was also the cross country running coach, Mr. Mm -hmm. Hamilton, shout out. Shout and then, out Mr. <laughs> Hamilton. Mr. Hamilton and Virna Bueller. So, and Bueller? See, Bueller. Bueller. I, I know, yeah, Bueller. 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 
Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, iconic. And, you know, to be remembering that, how many years later that those two people were key yeah. on uh, noticing I ran all the time. Like, I ran to my classes. I ran to the bus. I just had this, like, Forrest Gorin in me was my nickname. In Forrest grades. Gorin? Forrest Gorin, like Forrest Gump. It was like Forrest oh, okay. Gorin. If you spell Gorin, it's G-O-R-A-N, so it's like Go Ran. Go Run, so there you it's go. Like that, that was kind of like the start of my sporting career because I got involved with cross country and that led to field hockey and then that led to track and field and running is like a great sport like anybody can do it and it's a part of almost every sport you think about soccer tennis basketball what's the one thing that's ingrained in those sports running right right so I think the only sport there isn't is golf uh, yeah well you could you could do golf and you could run to the holes yeah there's like they, i think they call it like extreme golf or something oh, there's yeah. come on don't even look at it just go Hello. Oh, no. <laughs> that's my type of golf so if anybody ever wants to golf with me that's the type go. of that's golf yeah that's were your parents into sports I don't remember my dad being much into sports. Uh, my parents split up uh, when I was a teenager, so my mom was definitely the active role and the parent, and she was always supportive. And because I was a teenager, to get into the gyms and the fitness facilities, you had to have parental like, signatures. Right. She actually, I think, became more involved with sport and being healthy because I had to have a parent to oversee that. Mm -hmm. And I love that now, like I look forward or 20 years later, and my mom and I have great relationship where we can go out and power walk together and chat and go to the weight room she's a pilates instructor okay my biggest support network was the coaches and the friends in school which is really important there's a keynote of why i'm saying in school and the extracurricular programs because that's what led me into the business i'm doing mm -hmm. so running. let's talk about your businesses so uh so angela here is the the founder and a team captain of sock jock inc yeah exactly let's tell us about that uh, sock jock inc i brought a pair of socks look at this and they're actually very comfortable bamboo they're Canadian made, yeah. Canadian startup. Um, so yeah, like I guess, you know, to move forward from BC, obviously went to University of Victoria, the, uh, the national training centers were out there, had the fortunate opportunity to train at a very high level and, and compete and uh, did a lot of that all the way through rowing, got actively involved when I moved after graduation, uh, 2006 to Ottawa, mm -hmm. um, obviously capital of Canada, right. uh, to work in the federal government. Uh, with that, got involved with triathlon, competed with uh, Team Canada long course. How do you how do you choose how do you go from <laughs> uh, running yeah. to rowing and then from rowing to doing triathlons. Rowing found me. I didn't find it. I went to this beautiful p private school for grade 12. Mm -hmm. I was a rotary exchange student in grade 11, so I was out of country. Really Where close did you friends. go? Went to Germany. Oh. Yeah, I was in Germany for a year. You know, guten Tag. Yeah, yeah guten Tag. <laughs> guten Tag. So yeah, when I came back, most of my close friends, and you want to graduate with your close friends, right? right? So um, they all went to this beautiful school, Brentwood, Brentwood College, shout out Brentwood um, on the West Coast. Uh, stunning, stunning school. Aside from your academics, you had to participate in a sport and in an art mm -hmm. after school. In grade 12, you don't just walk onto a basketball court and our volleyball court. They're, yeah, those are I'd team sports. Those are team sports, and in grade 12, the girls are really good, and I've never done that. So the rowing coach at Brentwood approached me and said, well, what do you think about trying rowing? So so that's my story. I got involved with rowing there. Um, obviously, from running, I had a, a strong cardiovascular system. I, I love the sport. I love being on water in it as well. So it was a natural fit. I just I right. fell in love with it, and that took me through university. Met amazing people. Got to you know compete. Um, yeah, definitely. It, it was a really good sport. I think the neat thing out of graduating and moving into that secondary career phase that brought me to Ottawa. You know that moved with me, and and I went back to my roots of running and uh, joined like the running room. To be honest, in Ottawa, yeah. to actually meet people, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. And out of that that group of people were involved with triathlon, and that's kind of how I gravitated to that next sport. That you know. Um, did uh, yeah race the long course worlds and I, within my first Ironman in Mont Tremblant when it launched in 2012 I qualified for Kona I didn't get a go or I didn't go I should say because I signed a contract with a beautiful organization the Canadian Wildlife Federation to bike across Canada for kids and you know 7400 kilometers 7400 yeah kilometers and I how know. long did that do you, take you two and a half months congratulations it's, uh, thanks yeah. yeah. It was cool. I would do it again in a heartbeat. It was well worth it and beautiful country to see. And, I, you know, I think uh, for small business, like getting into sock jock, really, again, like rowing, it kind of found me. I didn't find it. I moved to work uh, up on the hill. Why did you choose to go to the parliament? My background in education was political science. So that's what I studied. 
my first career or my first move out of university was uh, working for the Minister of State for Early Childhood Development as a provincial minister in BC. Okay. And then what brought me to Ottawa was an opportunity. You worked under who, Harper? Uh, yes, under the Harper government. It was definitely an experience to be able to work on the Hill. And I can tell you, it took me all of maybe a month and a half before what I would say is your your life becomes so ingrained that you live on the Hill. Like you're so, you don't you don't have time for anything else. And after about a year and a half. It's too much. It's too much. It's uh, but people that work, parliamentarians, like a lot of people think, oh, you're a government employee gosh like it must be easy well people it, say you get into the government because you're gonna be set for life is that true I wouldn't say that I think job security if you want to go back could yeah, you still have it uh, well yeah I think I think at this stage obviously with experience I always joke uh, now that I've started and gone into business would I ever want to go back number one is the question to an office that's technically a nine-to-five which I don't think ever exists now in the world I will work every single day of my life to the point I'll work even harder so I don't ever have to go back to that because I listen, love listen to this I love what I do I don't have a job. I don't have a job but I work really hard how do you explain to people what you do when, <laughs> like, when they don't understand I mean as an entrepreneur I imagine you bounce between projects so you have in the past right well yeah uh, I think, um, uh, and you know, Howard Chang, great guy that's uh, the owner of Top Door Creative here in Toronto. Oh, okay. Check them out, great uh, agency to work with. They are phenomenal at what they do. And I love Howard because he, he really did nail me at the sense of like what I am as an entrepreneur. And you might relate to this. Tell me, tell he's, me. He's pretty much called me the golden retriever because I'm, I'm a dog without a leash and there's a bunch of balls in a field and I want to play with them all. Like I want to chase every single ball, right? And yeah. it's about focusing and choosing the best ball in that field that you want to play with for a long the time. The hard part is to, to know which, which one, ball, which one. Which one. So some dogs are really good at chasing a few balls because they're really fast. And I think my athletic prowess okay. has got me to a point where I can multitask a little bit. Yeah. I definitely have a clear focus. And the nice thing is, is what I've done is I've built all of my companies to touch one another in some way That's, when you yes. think about it. I do so, the same thing. I mean, every meeting becomes uh, a connection, a connection. And, and it connects yeah. people, so yeah. that's good. Uh, so tell me, what was your biggest obstacle that you've encountered when you were starting your first company? Learning the business smarts, I guess. Uh, what, and what, do you, what are those business smarts in your opinion? Oh gosh. So you like, really had no experience? No experience. Well, I knew what I wanted to do. I didn't just like, I'm going to go and start a business. Like, Sock Jock was it. And I then went and surrounded myself with people people that could support me and I right. think it's interesting when I look back at uh, good old 2008-2009, Ottawa was just starting to get into the incubator spaces. So yeah. Invest Ottawa, it's a part of a chapel of a whole bunch of uh, communities very similar across Canada and the major cities especially where there are office spaces supported by um, community uh, corporations as well as government. So like the city of Ottawa mm -hmm. put a lot of capital and funding into opening the space that was there to offer, you know, open sourced um, networks, um, mentorship. Yeah, they're really called working spaces. In yeah, China. exactly, shared working spaces. So, you know, you could be sitting next to me on a desk and we could have a conversation and something that you've experienced already, you might be able to go, hey, look, like, let's sit down and grab a coffee because yeah. I can help you out with that. Exactly. So, you know, I think the best thing that I learned about was not being shy to opening the, mo the mindset of like uh, meeting as many people as possible that could also help you sharing as much knowledge yep. to people don't keep information to yourself because it's not going to benefit you in the long run anyway no best thing was for me and a big learning thing was to surround myself with the best people how did you meet those people did you go to again go to events, events? yeah networking events you know um again you'd meet somebody and they'd be like you know what i think you should sit down you should join this group like for me i was researching even on linkedin and messaging people that you know we're in retail or we're in yeah. you know production or distribution um, investment fundraising and saying like how did you do it and it's amazing when you put the the energy out there and ask somebody for help how many actually got back saying I'll give you 30 minutes of my time exactly and it's like you never know unless you try try right that's all it's it is it's always worth it and Getting it's an email that's all it is it's just an email it yeah. takes five minutes to research who do you want to talk to and then just yeah. email them and you know what the worst case scenario is I find out of the network that I've reached out to even if you get a no they're so polite most people are like 
would love to help you, yeah. but I'm just, I'm not available right now. And usually they'll refer you to somebody else. Yeah. I don't find doors get closed. It's not often. And then it's up to you to make the choice of whether that person is somebody you want to continue to. But it's also the positive nature of, 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 of you as a person. Yeah. You have to be positive. Yeah. Right. I, I bet you, you're, you know that they're going to say yes. And then you don't get discouraged after they say no. Because no. you're like, maybe they'll get back to me tomorrow. Maybe next maybe, week. Maybe. But I'm going to send them to somebody else. Right. Yeah. But uh, again, so that's hard to, to look past that when you ke keep getting no's and no's and no's. And I know. And you know what? Until you get to your like 10th yes. The best advice I can give now after being in business and doing it for eight years is obviously you have to network and you have to go out and you have to ask. Asking is great and you're going to get no's. The hardest part is knowing who to give your time to when you start to go and get mentored because oftentimes obviously when you're a startup th there's lots of questions you have to ask yeah. and you're also looking for capital right like that's a big thing is like you know I'm starting a business it's really hard to go and get a small business loan because I don't have the assets especially if you're young you've got student loans you've got nothing no collateral you know I always say look if you've got a secure job maybe start the business in the evening so you have some some asset or some security mm -hmm. and go and get a small business loan while you have the job uh, this is what I learned you know, drive uber yeah always drive an uber yeah <laughs> or you know wait, uber. wait and serve tables but no like you can still run a successful business uh, and get it going while you have a full-time job definitely and and then see where it goes but the nice thing is if you have a full-time job you can go and get that ten thousand or that twenty thousand dollar small line of credit for a small business with a low interest where if you leave your job to go and start a business and then you go and try to get a small business loan yeah. from a bdc or an edc they're gonna look at you and go are you crazy you have nothing to lean on yeah right right now what i what i tell individuals because i'm a mentor at futurepreneur.ca i love futurepreneur right and great organization. that's a uh, it used to be known as Can canadian youth business Foundation. yes yeah cybf right suddenly i became uh, a mentor yes. at the startup advisory institute.com great shout out and startup canada i'm i'm on there so shout out to them because startup canada is great so right now what i tell people is is learn working nine to five still yeah exactly this will give you that extra uh, leverage and a buffer to to learn in say six months time and that and the benefit will be that if you understand the tax structure of the Canadian and the US government yeah. is that you're actually gonna get a m bigger refunds than you would normally as an individual because now you understand how business works yes and then once yeah. you so a year goes by you're gonna understand business now and then you're gonna understand you can actually get money back while running a business, while running a business. and then you can take that same money you just got to invest in your business so you won't even need to go for a loan yeah or you might not need to bring as many investors who are going to take shares or equity exactly out of your company right right so it's all about information and learning not yeah. really just jumping in because i i remember i just jumped in many many so, times same thing the biggest thing i always say well we've we've offered for so long like sports clubs and academic clubs and arts like you can find you know you drive down a street there's a dance studio there's you know all these different things that you can put your kids in mm -hmm. but there's no like hey go and learn how to start a business like i'm what, gonna do my know, i'm gonna do the one of the first camps for kids to learn about I'm in. business. I'm totally right? in. Let's do this. Let's do this. So we're going to have a camp for, I don't know, 10 year olds. Is that too early? I don't think so. I don't think it's too early. I think you can have, there has to be a screening criteria. 10 to, 10 to 13. And then you can have like 13 to 15. You it's just divisions. that, yeah, yeah, they have a, uh, Sock Jock can help with that. Yeah, definitely. Cause yeah. we've got the Great Canadian Youth Ambassador search starting in January. There's, yeah. I think the network, when you put yourself out there, the universe will come and talk out of the networks you do meet. Never burn a bridge. What, what happens say, when they rip you off? Rip you off or screw you over. You be the bigger person and you just walk mm -hmm. away. There's always somebody within that network who is also a good person. And the last thing you want to do is burn a bridge. And I think it makes you look a lot stronger. I, I don't live a stressful life. I look at everything in abundance and happiness and health. It's uh, and it's hard because definitely have gone through some challenging times. Like I think anybody in business will say that, right? Like it's not easy. Everybody thinks when you end up getting that first big bubble of success, they're like, oh wow, it must have been. You're so lucky. You're so lucky, and you're going, oh my gosh, like this has taken six to seven years to get going, and I've yeah. had days where I couldn't buy groceries, let alone pay my cell phone bill. To I didn't know if rent was gonna be able. I could go on and on, right? And, uh, and I think. Uh, every entrepreneur can relate to that. Definitely. Do you have any siblings? I have an older brother. Okay. And is he in business? You know what? He, he's a kind of, he's an entrepreneur. He owns a fishing company in the a summer. fishing company? Keeping it real fishing. Yeah. And Andrew. 
Where is it? Is it in still BC. In oh, yeah. Okay. So he's out west. Um, my mom's retired. And so aside from the sock jock, you're also uh, you're also doing something something else. Sure. But the yeah. new company is Global Sports Insurance. It's a money maker. Well, knock on wood, it's going to be a money maker. But better yet, it's actually the first SaaS based software API plug and play. A sports insurance membership platform. Canada. Who is it for? It is for anybody from the beginner recreational athlete who loves to travel, do experiential travel around. Definitely her focus is triathlon and cycling and multi-sport, like your Spartans and your Tough Mudders. So it's injury been, insurance? You know what CAA is? CAA membership for your car, automobile. Canadian auto. You get so many, like if your car breaks down, they come yes. to the side of the road. Yes, yes, So yes. you pay an annual fee. Yes. It's the same. So Athletica Protect is our product. And we've created a membership platform, a bronze, silver, gold. And you're going to pay a month by month if you want, or you can pay up front for and a year. And this doesn't exist anywhere else in the exist, industry? It doesn't exist anywhere else in the industry. So how do current athletes get insured if they want to do if they want to get insured? But you're generally insured through your provincial sport organization. So how is this different then? Like, why would you need more cross, insurance? Yeah, so it's cross-border and it's across the world. It's like, say right now, I'm covered by my Ontario Cycling license and I want to go down and go mountain biking in Vermont or California and I go down there I generally will have to get extended travel insurance and look at the specialty provisions to make sure should I have an accident on my bike that I can go into a hospital and not get charged five thousand dollars a night for a bed I think the biggest thing for me was looking at the fact that you know 20 years ago people were not buying five thousand ten thousand fifteen thousand dollars worth of bikes and gear so race this, wheels oh so that so insures the product as oh well. it 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 encompasses gear, trip and travel, and accidental, and over and trip above. Trip and travel? Because I remember when I when I go anywhere, they always, uh, when I booked a trip, they always ask, do you want to buy Would you insurance? Like insurance? Which is like 80, 90 bucks. Exactly. Just for that one just time. Just for that one time. So get this, that's going to be rolled into an annual policy. You can add would, that into so your... So if I your, break a GoPro on the trip, would that be covered? It will be. Oh. Yep. Okay, well then it's worth it. I know. 60 days out of country travel in a row. You can do that as many times. So really great for people that do a lot of travel or with their business. They live in another country, uh -huh. but they still want to experience um, their sport while they're doing that. The other thing is we're conglomerating or we're aggregating a lot of other products. So reaching out to like companies like Uber and Airbnb and Air Canada and working on partnerships with them. So in your gold oh, membership, you get discounts. You get discounts because for me to travel right now, like if I went to the airport with my bike, it's going to cost me a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars for my bike bag because it's extra. It's bit l larger luggage. Okay. So what we're doing is we're looking for partnerships where we'll cover that. That will be a part of your membership. I'm really excited to be uh, you know launching this at Techtoberfest in Waterloo. And then yeah. TechTO really October seventeenth will be where you're speaking. Yeah, where I'm speaking, and TechTO is going to be a great thing. So check TechTO out. But I will be there on Monday, October seventeenth, and that is going to be our big uh, showcase. And actually, the teams that are all involved will be there that night. Uh, just go back to the people who are watching this. If they want to start uh, anything, their own business, what's the first thing they th you think you should they should do? Find your why. Figure out your why. I picked up this great thing that my grandma passed on to me and I, I feel it's something that everybody should consider is, you know, graduating, it's a day you're excited and all of a sudden, you know, one of the things that you're advised to do is to sit down before you enter your first career, let's say, and write your obituary. It was a pretty interesting thing to have, you know, somebody that you love and you think they're going to be there to celebrate and ask you to do that because you're like, well, I, I'm going to think about dying. Yeah, right. It's like, oh my God, I just finished university and I just you know all these you're in that moment but it was the best advice and we live in such a busy crazy world we're always connected we got great awesome people in our lives and, and sometimes sitting down and just taking a big breath and going what am I doing and why am I doing it and the sooner you can figure that out the better ahead you're gonna be the advice that you know my grandma said is you know look if somebody gave me that advice earlier on perhaps I might have had a different path or perhaps I would have done more things so I think the message is life is short we, we but we do have a blessed time that we're here and if we understand who we are why we're here and what our what is and, and all the surroundings we're going to be better not only to others but the best thing is we're going to be the best person we can be our psychology is yes we're a simple sock solution your psychology, psychology. your psychology uh, the psychology <laughs> of sock jock is we're this you know we're a simple sock solution but yeah. really we're not about the socks we're about the why yeah. and it's getting youth and it's getting people like you and and others to really see who they are 
and how, you know, through, in this case, like consumer products and being bombarded every day by commercials and advertising and what we wear and what we, you know, put on as body sense and odor, you know, could those companies be more involved with our kids, with our communities? Could they be reinvesting? And that's Sock Jock. And that's all of my companies, like Global Sports Insurance, same thing. Like I've got a huge CSR model built into that about giving back to sport and youth development programs, not only here, but globally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's long-term impact. Okay, so uh, three characteristics that make up an entrepreneur. Oh gosh, right in the spot. Passion, number one. Uh -huh. Determination, yeah. perseverance. What's okay. the first business book you've ever read or self Tim Ferriss, Four Hour Work Week. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like that was my first really big business book that really sunk with me. I was like, I yeah. really love this guy. Okay. Um, he just come out with it too. So it was, uh, you know, just a decade ago. Um, but a really good book that I love to recommend, and she's a Canadian. It's not often that uh, I've seen a lot of women write uh, in the sense of business business books. She eats. Vicky Saunders. She um, she -E -O. Oh. It's a, it, obviously it's focused on women and getting into business, but I, I like that. Like she's done a really great job at summarizing um, the industry, the ask, um, the challenges that women have gone through into getting into small business and and actually breaking that ceiling cap and knowing, you know what, it is it is totally doable to go over and, and want to reach for a million plus plus plus. What she do you know? think is the biggest challenge for women to break into small business? I don't want to say that there's any challenge. Okay. I, I, but there clearly there, is. There is. Woman has to work extra hard to be taken even seriously. Serious. I mean, women are running the world, but the men are running the corporations. corporations. I think the more that we ask that question that there are, it creates that stigmatism that there is. Right. right? And that sends that message to that, that next generation of younger girls coming up that there still is a gap. Yeah. And it's really hard to, to try and persevere through something when you have people saying, yeah, I know a yeah, guy who whatever. did this and it failed. It failed. I think in business, this whole sense of failure, obviously we've all gone through it, no matter whether it's in business, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in, you know, sport, whether it's in something that we're passionate about. Um, it's how you get back up from that and that experience and what you look at it for. You can have so many people that will tell you, don't do it, do this, do that. At the end of the day, if you know who you are, if you want to give it a go, you love doing it. Failure is not a bad thing. Yeah. Like, and I, and I honestly say that I know people have different opinions on it, but you're only going to learn. And the best part is, is the fact that if you did something and you learn from it and you loved it, it's uh, it's not failure. Yeah, it's not okay. about how hard you get hit. It's how many times you get hit and how many times you can get keep getting keep up, up, keep going forward. That's from Absolutely. Rocky. That's that from Rocky is. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit. That's how winning is done. <laughs> I was gonna say that's such that's an iconic so like line. I love it. It reaffirms my, everything that I believe. Yeah. Well, my and I laugh because like I always say like my grade twelve like my walking up song was Eye of the Tiger yeah. and I literally lived that every single day like yeah. and you know and I built my company so Song Shop we're launching our non for profit angle champion a campaign yeah. so for those youth that are looking for an organization that is there to champion them check us out like that's what that what that's what it's about I want to be able to you know. Include Include people like you who yeah. are not the naysayers who want to help kids. Yeah. So we're putting Remember people, the camp that we're starting. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> we, and we could champion that. We could fund yeah. it, right? Yeah. Like what is your suggestion for, for raising funds? Uh, you know what? Again, I think it, it comes down to surrounding yourself with the right people, solid business deck, knowing your financials, what your projections are, and and then once you've got that into place, going back to those networks that you trust, you've built a relationship with, especially if it's a first time, you want to get people, number one, invested in you as well as your business and that when they come on board they're not just putting their capital in but they're coming on board with their expertise and also their own network that's a big thing I learned with sock job because I brought on some great people with capital because they wanted to finance it but what I also needed was people that understood the retail industry and production and, and placement and distribution and shipping so strategic partners. strategic partners not just money partners. not just money partners and you know doing it smart and I think if I was to go back and do it again I would have entered a couple of business competitions and challenges and got my confidence up on how to pitch perfect and, and and how to get out there and you know organically grow the company where one could have you know got a five thousand dollar grant or a ten thousand dollar bursary mm. and reinvested that so when you go in to present to somebody who's capitalizing it's like you know over the last year I've gone and won three business competitions and brought in thirty thousand dollars and I've also put in fifteen or twenty thousand dollars of my own cash right. that shows a lot you know what I mean yeah. so I think if you can go in 
put in the effort and the time. What do you think of the the whole advent of social media and YouTubers like things like this making money for people these days? Oh my gosh. I, you know what? I think it's fascinating to have watched in the last 20 years where technologies come from and gone to mm -hmm. and made accessible. This whole phenomenon of, you know, individuals being brands, it's smart. It's smart marketing. It's because it goes with what you just said. It's like people are investing in you as a person. So if your brand is established as an individual, they're going to have more faith more in you. More faith in you. Traditionally, like 20 or 30 years ago, a lot of people disassociated or they were advised a lot. You have your company and when you shut your, your doors, you leave, you go home to your family or, yes. or go home. So you weren't. they weren't saying be a part of it. Whereas now... I think it's the complete opposite. You have to be your business just as much as your business has to be you. And because the the one person that's always going to stand up for your company and make sure that it's successful at the end of the day is yourself. So if you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe in your business, you don't believe in the employees that you hire and trust them with the key to the success that you've built, your business might as well shut down. The business does not care about you. You have to, to care, care about, about your it. business. Yeah. You got to feed it, right? It's like planting a plant. If you if you put it in a garden, if you don't water it and soil it and feed it and surround it with other things that live and breathe, yeah, it's not going to cultivate. We, in, in essence, as entrepreneurs, we are that first seed. You have to put that in the ground and you have to get it to sprout. And it's after that, depends on what kind of a plant it is, how many limbs it grows, does it produce fruit, and, and how long do you want to grow it for. So many analogies. I know. Over experiments. There you go. Tell me about a day in the life. Give me a week, a synopsis of a week. Oh my gosh, I don't even, I, a week would be too much. But tell me how many hours do you sleep, first of all? Um, I sleep anywhere between five and a half to six and a half hours. Okay, optimum. what do you eat for breakfast? What do I eat for breakfast? Yeah. I generally eat a multigrain cereal or a protein shake. I use a New Zealand whey or Vega because I'm a huge supporter of Vega Protein, Canadian-based okay. company that started. Vega Protein sponsor us. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, Brandon. That's your Angela. Yeah, I love Vega. You, yeah, I know, you know what, him? the founder of it. Yeah, oh, for sure. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it's sold. I, I believe that in the last year, he's, it's merged into another major label, but okay. great product for sure. My morning is very important. I generally get up and train because I'm still obviously very active. I'm going after uh, my goal is in 2017 which is a part of Canada's 150th is to do the one hour on the velodrome because I love track cycling oh the velodrome so that's the, the, the you go round, around in a bike yeah around in a bike and, and how fast do you go on that oh gosh you can get going really fast it just depends well, uh, how fast like 80, uh, 100 oh gosh no I would say at higher 30s 40s kilometers kilometers an hour yeah that's slow. I bike that yeah. on the street. <laughs> yeah, but you're doing it for a few hours. Keep what kind of bike living. do you have? Um, what? I, oh, I have a Bertrand. It's a custom build bike, and uh, it's uh, old uh, Maranoni was a part of it. And in the cycling community, people will know Maranoni bike is is so it's, it's very like, fun. It's very it's sweet. It's like a Ferrari of bikes. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm looking for, I'm hoping Cervelo, fingers crossed, if you listen to this, Cervelo, I would love you to come on board as a sponsor. The, I need to get a, a track bike built, and I also and need gonna a And I'm going to take your old Marconi or Mertone? Yeah, I'll, you know what, if Cervelo comes on board... Yeah, um, I'm going to get her bike. No, I, I can't say I can get it, because that's like, it's got my name on it. I got it's okay. Free. It's like, that's okay. you can borrow it. I, I, okay, this. I could be Angela. <laughs> but How many meetings do you have during the week? Oh gosh, I, I say on average, I try to book between 15 or 20 solid personal meetings. Um, generally one event or one networking event. And then the evenings I'm also training, which is also a part of my networking because being somebody that's involved with sport, I have sports socks and yeah. an insurance company. It's great because I'll do a bike, a different bike club. I'll join up with our trail running group or I'll go and do a specific boot camp or a workout. I know I can connect with people and let them know about what I do. Um, what so gyms do you like? Well, Good Life is a huge like shout out. Good Life Advantage. Good life, yeah, Good, good Life. Good Life. Um, was amazing to meet Patch uh, the the other day at CanFit Pro here in Toronto. Have yes. you met the founder? Of yeah, Pat? yeah, really? Pat, David Patch Evans. Yeah, and Jesus. he's married to Silken Laman, who's uh, behind and founder of the Good Life Kids Foundation, which is where Sockjaw got involved. So this oh. year we're going to be actively involved with a spin for kids, which I'm so excited about with our new Champion of Campaign software, where all these different members that are, are having to raise a thousand dollars for their cycling team to be a part of the spin for kids, they'll be able to do that by socks through their Champion community walls. And and all that funding from their internal sock sales, a part of the Good Life membership, will go back to the Good Life Kids Foundation. Very so I'm cool. so excited about 2017 and seeing what uh, Good Life can do with uh, with socks. But, uh, right. Yeah, the day in the life of it's or the week of it's. You know what? It's busy. It's a lot of fun. It's nonstop. I think when you own a business, you never stop. You know what I mean? No, like because it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like work. You get excited. You get a kick. And once it gets an adrenaline, you get an adrenaline oh, yeah. rush. 
What do you do on your uh, off time? I really, I, I give it to friends. I love going to theme parks. I love watching movies. I love going to the beach. I love being in the water. I'll do, I love being active. So like hiking, biking, and it doesn't have to be competitive. Right. So I think that's the, the cool part. And I, I value doing that with people. I have a low battery, but I can tell you. I have this thing, it's a power bank. You could use it. What's what's this? And I'm surprised that you don't know about them. It's a company called DigiPower. I actually got them because we use them for the GoPro materials. It's like a, basically wow. it's a power bank. If they're doing something sporty. No, but the uh, cool thing is that they're gonna release a water bottle with a built-in Bluetooth speaker. Okay, so I'm I'm cycling and I'm doing a one-hour record. So this but, I could market with Global Sports Insurance with all the cyclists and the cycling community and the traveling community and the running community. That water bottle. That definitely, go. we got to get it on. So good hit. I there like it, go. and it's charging my phone. So by the time uh, you drop yeah, me off, definitely. I'll have some power. So, have you ever seen yourself as an announcer? I could totally see you as an announcer. I'd love to be an announcer. Like, so give me a thirty second sort of like an announcer present. Like, like hey yeah. everybody, this is Angela Gordon coming to you live from. Oh, you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. Right, so you're, right. okay, you're in a helicopter. You're in a helicopter. All right, this <laughs> is my promotion. My gosh. All right, all right. This is Angela Gordon coming live at the UCI Ottawa Grand Prix 2017. I hear you, Auburn. Angela. Yeah. I hear you live. It's coming clear. live. <laughs> We've got a lineup of great racers coming in from all over the world today. We got 50 deep in the men's cycle, over 30 in the women, which is unreal for an international cycling event here in Canada. Prize loots up to $25,000. The race starts in the next 30 minutes. You can see the athletes warming up in their expo village. Check them out if your families are already down at oh, the oh, Lansdowne something's Park. Happening. Something's What's happening? happening where? Where, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was pretty good. Pretty good for impromptu. You, you know, go. on the spot. There you go. TSN.com. TSN.com. Ring, ring. Our sports net or, you know, 1200 AM. I'd like to get into not only sports, but I think the better part is entrepreneurship for kids. Like, I'd love to start something Yeah, me like, too. Like I would getting totally in. love to do I that. I want to hear the stories and, you know, definitely launching this great Canadian Youth Ambassador Search in January. Then so let's get the kids on the show. Exactly. So we're launching January 1st, Champion Campaign and Sock Jock. Obviously, um, major partners coming on board. We'll be making that announcement coming this fall. It will run through until March 17th, which is the end of spring break. Mm -hmm. But the contest itself will end on February 28th. So they'll have two months to upload and share two to three minutes of where their feet have taken them and where their feet are going to take them. And it's what is the age demographic? Like 13 to 18, middle school to high school. And the goal is that within their video, they'll create their champion walls so we can vote on them, much like you do on Canadian Idol or So You Think You Can Dance. It becomes a user, Canadian-based, supportive network where these youth have to share their story of what they do in community arts, sports, and academics, which are our four pillars. And three youth per province and territory will be selected and flown in to spend one week of their spring break doing certain challenges throughout Toronto. And then on March 17th, we'll be hosting a major event where the top youth ambassador will be selected per province and territory, making 13 ambassadors, which then will get those 13 on your show. That can be a part of the prize package. What's the website for this? It's going to be canadianyouth.ca and .org. If you're a parent, you're a teacher, you're a coach, bookmark it too, share it. It's going to be great. Very if you're cool looking initiative. for sponsoring a great initiative, come on board because we need a lot of help there to make it happen too. Very cool initiative. Yeah, thank you. Well, you're involved, didn't you, didn't you know? I don't know. There you go. And if you focus on money and that, like you said, passion, then your passion will dwindle away. If you have a hard day or a hard week or a hard month or you have to spend more money, you won't want to invest and then there goes your business. You believe in yourself and everything that you do and hopefully money will just follow. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard to it's believe really that. I always joke that in my apartment, there's all these little dings and nicks and hacks. I'm like, well, that's where I've hit my head before. That's where my foot went. That's why you don't patch them up, right? It's yeah, a reminder. It's, it's a reminder and you can even write on the wall if you own the house. It's pretty funny. It's kind of like, you know, when you're little and your parents marked like you're growing of your height. I think you need to have a, a, a wall that you can write on. Like it could be your like your punching bag or your motivational or your inspirational wall where you can see all these points along your business where you realize the toughness and also the great successes. And I think that's one thing is that even as entrepreneurs, we don't often realize these big milestones of achievement and, and actually don't smell the roses. It's hard to congratulate yourself. I think a lot of people don't go, wow, like that was a big milestone and congrats. Yeah, right? and, I, and I, I'm starting to see that now. You can always reach out and touch people. And I think that's, that's the brilliant part is uh, you can always give back and it will come back to you full fold. We're, we're done. We're wrapped. So thank you very much for taking the time to, to talk to me and talk to the audience. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Thanks so much guys for watching. I hope you're inspired. You've learned something. If you haven't watched the other episodes, I'm sure you pick something up. Oh. Catch Angela out again at Instagram. Because Angela Gorin, just spell my name, add me. Well, do you have like a main website for your company? Yeah, Sock Jock, S-O-K-J-O-K. -O -K -O -K. 
And the insurance company? Insurance is Global Sports Insurance Global and Sports Athletica insurance. Protect. So big things for this lady. She's a woman entrepreneur. So if you're a young girl, you can get to where you want to get to as long as you believe in yourself yep. and don't listen to the negative people. Believe to achieve is my tagline. Thanks again Bye. and I'll see you next time. A lot of people have great ideas, but they don't want to share them with the world because they're afraid of uh, rejection, ridicule, or whatever it may be. Right. And Some people are afraid to finish what they're working on because they don't want to hear an opinion on it. Yeah. It's like, if it's unfinished, then it can't be judged. So what do you play? Ron Burgundy's a flautist, man, from uh, Anchorman. He plays he jazz did. flute. Well, he does. Hey, Aqualung! That's right. Come on, it's, that's manly. <laughs> Yes, it doesn't get more bad than uh, Rod. <laughs> For some reason, I've never been nervous about performing. Um, it was always exciting for uh -huh. me, and I always felt comfortable. Since I was a little kid, I wanted to be the center of attention. Oh, you know, okay, so okay. when I got to go out on stage, I was always excited about the challenge of winning people over and entertaining people. So I mean, like, what is, what is it that, like, are you in a band? Do you... Yes, I'm in a band. Okay. We're called Bare Naked Ladies. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. I love it. Money. You want to make it, save it, and preserve more of it. That's why you need money.ca and Money Magazine to get all the valuable, actionable news that you want and need. Visit us now at money.ca. my breath for a second there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Right on. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I love it. I'm taking a picture. <laughs> it's, it's just recording. It's recording. It's just recording. It's weird. Yeah, you'll still it. Oh, Everybody say one billion. <laughs> we Everybody say money. money. Yeah, I, that I, works. Could, I could tell you though, I've taken a group this small and changed it into convention centers of 15, 20,000. Wow. Yep. Right? I can do that with this group. You know, it's not how you get involved in the industry, it's who you get involved with. That's pretty crazy. Right on? Yeah, it's pretty nice. I love it.